Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin up 7.44% to 61341. Ethereum up 2.19% 2 to 3851. My goal is to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love and also gain real wealth in the process. Rule 774, master yourself to master the market. Self-mastery should be one of those key goals that you seek to attain in life because living below your true potential creates deep unhappiness and frustration. And also freedom follows self-mastery. The first step in self-mastery is objective awareness. It's really important to understand how you think and how you feel about life in general. For example, are you pursuing the components of real wealth or are you just focused on other things? Do you have inner and outer peace, a sense of purpose and fearlessness? Are you embracing empathy and love or are you looking to the other side? Are you approaching life from a fear-based perspective? Trading and investing are fear-based professions. It's really important that you see the fear and do it anyway. Developing courage is incredibly important. Uncertainty dominates the financial markets, but it also dominates life. Turning to KS own analysis, the four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. Zone one and two are the fear zones. One is internal, one is external. The panic zone, internal panic, internal fear and terror. Zone two, the blame zone. That's external panic, conflict and attacking others. The problem in life and especially in trading, there is no certainty. Self mastery becomes really important to move from zone one to zone two, to zone two, to zone three, from zone three into zone four. When we accept that there's only probabilities in life, there is no certainty. We can move to probabilistic fearlessness. In zone three, it's all about patience and rules. Patience, giving things time to mature, giving yourself time to overcome fear and anxiety. That's why rules are so important inside zone three. I share my rules with you. I've created those rules over 30 plus years in financial markets. They're there to take you out of zone one and zone two as quickly as possible. But the truth is we all have to go through the panic zone and the blame zone to get to zone three. It's just natural. In zone one and zone two, people take risks, but they're generally uncalculated risks. In zone three, we also take risks, but they're more calculated based on probabilities. Zone four is the meaning zone. That's where self mastery has been attained. And it's a lifelong journey to attain self mastery. We're always evolving every day we evolve. If you feel like you're in zone one or zone two, that's absolutely no problem. Everybody starts there and people can stay there for years. So it's not about time. Just have an objective awareness of where you're at. That's the first step to self mastery. You might also like to think about what your actual goals are. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on just the money or are you focusing on what life is really all about? It's all about generosity and selflessness, empathy and love, gratitude and happiness, integrity, decency, inner and outer peace, fulfillment and meaning. Many people look at these components of real wealth and say, oh, I'll get those after I become really financially secure or mega rich. Unfortunately, that's not the way to go. If you focus on these components of real wealth as you're progressing through your journey, you will get happiness instantly. You don't have to wait until you get a goal. The problem with financial goals is as soon as you get one, you'll just double it. 
maybe you have a goal of getting ten thousand dollars you get that now it becomes fifty thousand dollars or twenty thousand and then it becomes 40 or 80 or 160 or 320. Financial goals do not have a cap. They are uncapped. They keep on multiplying. When you get a million, you want 5 million. When you get five, you'll want 10. When you get a billion, you want 10 billion. It doesn't stop. However, you can have a really, really good life on your journey towards wealth. And think about this. If you can be a blessing to others, that is also very meaningful. Just a kind word, a smile, as calling somebody by their name when you go to a restaurant or order a coffee, those things are very nice. That's a component of real wealth. And you can have that doesn't matter what amount of money you have or don't have. You can have that anytime. Looking at investment substitutability, the stock market, S&P 500, is up 28% for the past year. Gold is down 7%. Bitcoin is up 441%. Turning to the combined market capitalizations of Bitcoin and Ethereum, we can see we came back and tested that line of structural repair. We've got above the line of positive momentum. We're up to the line of price discovery. Anything market cap wise above this level, above the $1.589 trillion level, is a combined Bitcoin and Ethereum price discovery level. It's quite exciting. However, we must also really bear in mind, just to watch the markets, that the Evergrande default situation is going to come out in approximately eight days. That is, is Evergrande in technical default and has progressed past technical default to actual default of this US denominated debt. There are a lot of troubles in the Chinese property sector at the moment. Basically, Evergrande is just the canary in the coal mine. There are definite issues which could impact stock markets around the world. I just say this for your awareness. Just be aware. Just know what you're doing for the upside and the downside. All professional traders and investors know about this kind of information. It doesn't freak them out. It's just, oh, I need to be careful. I need to pay attention. Just stay in the market and follow the trend of what is going on. But having some money aside in the 10-5-10 fund can be a really good idea as well. In about 42 days, we'll understand what happens with the US debt ceiling. You might notice this white line in the background. That's as actually the NASDAQ. I'll just make it brighter for you. You can see that directionally, Bitcoin is moving with the directional bias of the NASDAQ. This is important. When stock markets tend to decrease, what we see is the directional bias can change. You notice this big upsurge in Bitcoin's price. Notice the NASDAQ upsurge here, upsurge, upsurge. It is important to keep these relationships in your mind. This is what professional traders and investors do. As we've passed key resistance levels, we expect very strong upward momentum, but that doesn't always go in a straight line. Just looking back to the 2016 bull run, we can see that we had very good appreciations in price, but also 20%, 40%, 30% plus drawdowns. Please be aware of this. What it basically means, if you thought back in the 2016 bull run that you had missed price, pretend you can't see anything to the right of this diagram. You're just focusing on this big move up. You might say, oh, I've missed out. And then you get a retracement. You potentially buy the dip and then price goes up and then it falls 40% back to this level. This is the thing with crypto because it's so volatile. You rarely miss out. You just layer by your positions. That's why we have rule 94. Let price come to you. Turning to Bitcoin's technical analysis, the current price 61233. We can see that we broke out of this resistance. We came back, retested, resumed off. 
very good work. We bypassed that 59,394. What we said recently, when we get past this level, we expect higher prices. We're coming up to another key resistance level at 63,511. Remember, price is always moving in a wave. It's always going up and down and up and down. You can layer buy if you want to get into Bitcoin at this stage. Support levels are 60,198, 53,394, 58,038, 56,909, 55,899. Turning to Ethereum's technical analysis, Ethereum is currently trading at 3847. We've seen an overcoming of this resistance line. Quite a very nice price move up from around the $3,400 mark to $3,800. This is crypto. It's very volatile by nature. Please be aware of the risks to the upside and to the downside and have your strategies in play for when things naturally perform price actions. If you're an investor, Potentially, it just really doesn't matter. You can seek to buy at lower prices on massively red days. Yes, they will occur. That's just part of crypto. We can see Bitcoin's fingerprint here playing out. We can see the directional correlation between Bitcoin's price action and Ethereum's price action. As Ethereum got over that 3649 mark and has taken out that resistance, it's turned that resistance line into a support line. What we're looking at now is targeting the next level, 39, 35 and 40, 30. Support levels below are 37, 74, 36, 99, 36, 49, 35, 90, 35, 15, 34, 47. And we've got a key one in here at 33.19. The crypto market is inherently volatile. Just cast your eye back to here around the first week in September. You can see prices can come down dramatically. I think we've got a lot of good positive action in the crypto market at the moment, but there are issues, storm clouds that we do need to take note of. They don't panic us out or anything like that. It's just we know they're there and they don't catch us by surprise. The momentum in the crypto market is positive. Looking at the Bitcoin stablecoin supply ratio SSR oscillator, we can see that stablecoins are flowing into the market and that is flowing into Bitcoin, supporting this upward price momentum. We can also see the association between futures open interest and price. Futures open interest currently is 21.4 billion. And the latest figure is 22.28 billion. This means the prices are being supported well. Over the past 24 hours, there's been 320.57 million in liquidations occurring across 69,705 traders. Over the past 12 hours, about 72% of liquidations were short. We can see the liquidations are still quite low. We would be expecting, with so much open interest in the market, that we would get a very big spike, either to the short or to the long side. Every day we look into the engine of the crypto market and understand its health. USDT, we look at the stable coins, USDT, Tether, USDC, Circle, BUSD from PAX. We're seeking to understand, are the stable coins growing or are they decreasing? What is happening with the stable coins? We can see that USDT was pretty much a flat line and is going up just recently. There's some, been some really interesting developments with Tether. I'll get to those in a minute. We can see USDC has got a lot of interest. People are seeking to put their stable coins in USDC, and that is not surprising at all. BUSD is also increasing in terms of circulation. 
Checking Tether's financials on the futures market, we can see very low open interest in the perpetuals and the traditional futures pretty much non-existent. We don't see any issues with Tether whatsoever in terms of any de-pegging activity. We can also see the Crypto Fear and Greed Index is 78, which is extreme greed. I'd like to thank the community members who reach out and send me all sorts of articles on so many things. I really appreciate it. The CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, ordered Tether and Bitfinex to pay fines totaling $42.5 million. Now, what is this all about? Basically, Tether was taken to the CFTC for making untrue and misleading statements and omissions of material fact. And what were those statements and omissions? Well, basically, Tether stated that there was 100% backing of their stable coins with corresponding fiat assets, including US dollars and euros. However, the CFTC found that from June 1st, 2016 to February 25th, 2019, the majority of Tether's reserves were not fully backed. In fact, the circulation was only backed 27.6% of the days in that 26 month sample period. Basically what happened then is that the CFTC decided to slap <laughs> Tether with a fine of a whopping $41 million. How could Tether afford that? Tether's market cap is $68.5 billion. Hitting them with a $41 million fine is sheer ludicrousy. Quite seriously, Tether execs must be so happy. I think a lot of the price movement in Bitcoin and crypto is related to this CFTC handing down this fine. It literally is a no fine. It's like, hey, multi-billionaire, pay, pay a couple of cents. That's basically what it is. Now, interestingly, a company's registration status can be found using NFA Basic. This is from the CFTC. I'll make sure that I leave this link in the description of this video. Now, let's have a look at what they're talking about. We can see Tether, 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 many Tethers in here, Ifinex, BFXNA, BFX, WW. So we'll just look that up, those particular tickers, if you like, those particular keywords in the NFA basic. Surely they must be there now because what? The CFT says that you, uh, that you can't do this anymore. For example, when they find Tether, they said, the CFT said to Tether, you must cease and desist from any further violations of the Commodities Exchange Act and the CFTC regulations. And we got a similar thought thing with Bitfinex. So let's look if they're actually registered now. We can start here with iFinex. Just going into the search, typing in iFinex. Ooh, zero results. Wow. Let's check out BFXNA. Doing the same thing, typing it in and pressing search. It's not an NFA member. <laughs> this is really interesting. Non-members not subject to NFA oversight. CFTC, what are you doing? There's one action here, which we already know about. So if we type in BFX, WW, no results. If we type in Bitfinex, no results. If we type in Tether, We've got this particular person here, but we don't have Tether the corporation. From a legalistic perspective, I think that the CFT is, C has just absolutely dropped the ball. They had an opportunity to rein in some behavior that is well known in the crypto space. Instead, they just basically gave a free pass and you can see what happened to the market. Bitcoin is just up 7.53%. Also, a lot of people have been calling out, why is the volume so high, 88, well, nearly $89 billion of Tether for a market cap of 68.5 billion? If we look at USDC coin, $32.7 billion and just a percentage of that in volume terms. 
Now, this can be explained by people swapping in and out of Tether, but it does certainly show a lot of activity. If you want to see this volume a little more clearly, on CoinMarketCap, just click Tether and then just say the last three months. And then just this little gray area here, that's the volume. You can see the volume is typically above 68 billion, which is the circulating supply of Tether. This is quite common for the volume to be above circulating supply. There's just so many cryptos that are paired with Tether. What this means is people are constantly swapping in and out of Tether. We'll still keep an eye on Tether. What this basically means is a headwind against Tether has been removed. And that is a really positive thing for the crypto industry. Rule 32, find the market's focus. We are always interested to know what is in demand in the crypto space. You can make a lot of money by putting things on the radar that are going up, hopefully before they start to go up as well. When we look at Binance derivatives, this is the change in the price of the contract in the past 24 hours. This basically means 7.9% you can look at as price pressure. Call it 8%. We can see Ethereum. Ethereum has around 2%, 8% Bitcoin, 2% Ethereum. So what is the difference in pricing? If we look at the main market, we can see Bitcoin has much higher, high, higher price pressure than Ethereum. Tracking these figures can be very, very profitable. Let's have a look at the majority of the perpetuals and see what is going up, what has the most price pressure. You also have to bear in mind that when you get massive spikes like this, it generally means that particular crypto has literally spiked up the wall. And when they go up the wall, they often come down in a lift. So be a little bit careful. You have to know how to read this. So what are we noticing over 10%? Quite a few things. Dot, LRC, Unfi, Lit, Mask, CHR, Reef, the Graph, Dodo, SKL, Matic, NKN, and Keep. It's also good to go the other way and just determine how red or how green the entire market is. When we look, the only one below, above negative 10% is SFP, negative 12.5%. And then we can see just a smattering. Basically, the market is incredibly positive as we would expect. As Bitcoin goes, so does the market. If Bitcoin is going up, the market is going up. Looking at the top 33, we can see DOT over the past 14 days is now out in front, followed by Bitcoin, then XLM, and then Matic, then ETH, then Bitcoin Cash, the graph, Litecoin, BNB, and then Axie Infinity. You can see how just so rapidly cryptos can turn around. We can see that DOT is very much in focus. It's broken a level of resistance, turned that to support, and is rallying up quite nicely. We can also see Matic is on the way up. XLM is doing a similar thing to DOT. It's just getting over that level of resistance now. It could be quite interesting to look at. Let's have a quick look across the top eight to see what is in focus. Of course, what is in focus generally relates to what is going up as Bitcoin is going up. It, it can go up if Bitcoin goes down as well. That's in focus. But primarily, we're seeking to see things moving in a certain market direction. We can see Bitcoin and Ethereum are mirroring each other very well. Binance coin is also mirroring. This is a really important thing. We need to keep in mind that as Bitcoin goes in a directional bias, it doesn't mean if Bitcoin goes up 7.5%, Cardano will go up 7.5%. That's not what it's about. It's really about the concept, if Bitcoin moves up, ADA should be moving up. 
if it's moving down when Bitcoin is moving up, that means Bitcoin's gravity will sooner or later pull it up if Bitcoin's movement is continued to the upside. That's what gravity is all about. We can see XRP looking quite well, very nice at the moment. It's actually crossed a level of resistance. We've got a lot of support in here for price action that is going higher by the technical look of that chart. When we look at Sol, Sol is coming up to a level of resistance around 174.34. Doge is turning around. The next major level of resistance is 2508. Dot is on a tear. Look at that. Very beautiful. If we were to draw a line, get rid of the magnet because it drives me crazy. If we were to draw a line from this low to this low and then just extend it, we can see how well that actually supports the price. Now, the second line that we draw here is from this low to the clustering of lows around there. We're seeing dot is starting to take off. There's another thing that we can do here, which is quite useful. From the first peak to the next peak, we can basically draw a line like this. And it gives us an understanding of how powerful the price action is. You can see DOT is being supported very, very well here. It hit this cradle and it bounced. When we go through this analysis, the key is to think about your beloved altcoins. It may be there in here as well. Are your alts moving with Bitcoin's directional bias or are they diverging? These kind of things can give you a really good insight into should I buy or should I take profits? Let's have a look at the next group of eight. We can see Algorand. Algorand is currently under resistance and we can see that it's starting to turn around. I would imagine there would be a level of support coming around here at the current price. We can see SHIB. SHIB has done a massive increase and is consolidating currently. Looking at Luna, Luna is finding a level of support. When we see the market going up by such a great amount, we can pretty much determine that the market participants, the non top alts will start to go up as well. It's just the way of it. We can see that Uni is nearing a level of support and is getting close to taking out that previous high. That's looking quite good. We can see AVAX. AVAX has certainly been in a downtrend. We would be expecting at some stage for that snapback to occur in terms of gravity, but look for a sign of technical repair first. Chainlink. Chainlink is doing really well. It's up at a level of resistance. When it gets to that 2851, I think it's going to have a lot of fun. When we look at Litecoin, Litecoin is doing a really, really good job. We've noticed that Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash have been absolutely on par in terms of the fingerprint of Bitcoin. As Bitcoin goes up, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash have been doing very, very similar price movements. Let's have a look at the next group of eight. We can see Stella is doing really, really well. If we draw a line from there to there and just extend it up, you notice that I'm not trying to capture this bottom price action. I'm not really interested in that. What I'm seeking to do is to see how the first real pullback and second pullback matter. Do they set the trend? It's a very powerful thing to do. We can see that Stella's price action is being really well supported. It's getting above a level of resistance. We would expect higher prices from a technical perspective. When looking at Matic, we can see Matic has broken out from resistance. Now, how do we tell that? Drawing a really tight trend line. I like the tight ones. The tighter, the better, because it gives you a more rapid signal. Now, I've often said the pure technical analysis will be a problem. Okay, why is that? Matic just actually demonstrated it. 
So I'll zoom in here. Maybe I'll just go in this way to show you. What you're seeing here is very substantial, for example, support along this line, but it broke here. That would shake a lot of people out that play pure technicals. In technical analysis, you have to be very, very careful. It needs to be modified. So that's what I specialize in, modifying technical analysis to suit crypto. And we can see here that this shakeout would have resulted in many people missing this upward price path. When we look at Cosmos, Adam, what we see here is that a line of resistance has been taken out. If you just drew it in with your eye, for example, it could look something like this. Now, again, I'm not trying to be technically brilliant or anything. I'm being a little bit artistic. What we need to see in the crypto market, because it moves so quickly, is major structural deviation. What we can see here is a drop off coming back, retesting. This line is very solid and is now acting as support. We would expect Adam to keep on increasing. We could also draw a line from these bottoms up and we would see something like the matic thing playing out where you get price action below a support line that means it's under resistance but i think adam could be doing quite well in the coming days having a look at filecoin file has for example if we draw a line down here maybe the best way to explain it to you you really want to see a line that hugs as many points as humanly possible. That's not always an easy thing to do. And there's a lot of subjectivity involved. But the basic concept is you want your line to be representative of the direction of the price action. You can see that we got above in Filecoin. Price got above this once resistance line and now starting to consolidate, we can see an upward path. Which do you think is more strong or which is stronger, Filecoin or Cosmos? Please let me know in the description. It doesn't mean that you need to put any money in either of these things. This is a question you should be asking about your alts, which is stronger, which is looking better. Let's have a look at ICP. ICP has been under a lot of negative pressure. We can see that ICP is also starting to turn around. Having a look at Axie Infinity. Axie, let me just draw a line in there again. This is an artistic line because when you draw your TA, just always realize you're an artist so long as you're being consistent in what is going on that is completely fine now what are we seeing in Axie we had a blow up here and now it's moving inversely to Bitcoin you notice this Bitcoin is moving up Axie is moving down but what is it doing it's consolidating around this line of upward support we can see FTX token has been doing really well. It's overcome this level of resistance. It's on the way back up and it's set to overcome resistance when the price is above 58.29. Tron also looking quite good. We can see Tron was in a massive downtrend and it broke. This is crypto for you. Things can turn around very, very quickly. That's why if you think that you lost an opportunity before you never lose opportunities in crypto it's just so chaotic and volatile there's always new opportunities going to the next date we can just look very quickly what do you think is in favor and out of favor and why do you think that we had a really good response in the past video many people shared their interpretations of what was strong in and out of favor it's always good to go and look at those. It's all about getting it right in your own mind. Now, what is Theta doing? Is Theta moving with Bitcoin? Is it in favor or out of favor? Icon, what's Icon doing? Is it in favor or out of favor? 
And always remember that something that is out of favor can snap back so quickly. It's just unbelievable. They can be very good dollar cost averaging strategies to buy in basically out of favor tokens. Have a look at Zill. Is it in favor or out of favor? What do you think about Elrond, EGLD, in favor or out? What about Phantom? in or out of favor. It's very interesting, isn't it? There's so many different structures that you look at. That's why this pattern recognition is so important. I know a lot of people just want to look at one or two coins, but I think from a professional stance, the more patterns you see, the more incredibly good you're going to be at actually placing trades and getting in and out of things. You'll just realize so much more than the average person. What about HBAR? HBAR, is it in or out of favor? And why would you think that? What about one? Is it in or out of favor? And what is your thought process? When I say, why do you think that? It's not a bad thing. It's really, what is your thought process? What about the graph, GRT, is it in favor or out of favor? I think that one is fairly self-explanatory. There's something really interesting to note with the graph. Look at this, incredible spike, maybe we'll just full screen it, incredible spike in price action. Many people would have thought, I've missed it, I've missed it, I've missed it, bye, bye, bye. But inside our community, we don't care about those things. We know that price is always negatively biased. We allow price to come to us. And that's exactly what it always does. Price is always moving in a wave. If you think you miss out, please don't think that way. There's always an opportunity to get back in. It may not happen instantly. It could take some time but there is always that opportunity. Now, what did the graph do here? If you look at this, actually, I'll just show you. If you look at this particular price action, we've got a level of resistance here, level of resistance, and going through here, it came down to that past level of resistance. It could have been possible for it to come down one more to here, to here to here you can see that playing out quite well but it came down about halfway imagine when price is all the way up here at like 84 cents and you would say ah oh, i've missed it it's gone look at all this buying activity it's just all over it's going to the moon it's never coming back go all in and more sell your house and then you say hang on a sec i remember ken said that if it goes up the wall it's probably going to come down the wall sharp angles reverse and price comes to me and price is always moving in a wave oh and buy at support so maybe i just look at support buys for example there would be one there and one here at that level these are all potential support buys where you could have got in if you miss one, well, that's just the name of the game and you don't worry about that. You can always move it up later, but you always know price is moving in a wave and it really depends what you're doing. If you're an investor, you want to set these lower so that you get the maximum opportunity. And if you're a trader, you just go in and scalp or swing or do your momentum or whatever it is that you're doing. But when I see something like this, like a spike like this, I just sell it and then I buy it back for 50% and then I sell it again. Let's take a quick look through the market. We can see that the VIX, the fear gauge has just plummeted. Now, what does that mean? It's just like the fear gauge in the crypto market. When fear is out of the market, the prices go going up. And that's exactly what happened to the NASDAQ. It passed through this level of resistance and has turned it to support. On your stock market, let's have a look at the US dollar currency index. What do we notice here? When the markets are coming down, the dollar's going up. Now the markets are going up, the dollar's coming down. These relationships don't always hold. We just have to see what happens, but just be aware. We know Bitcoin is going bananas at the moment, technical term. 
We can see the T-bond futures, the bond prices, starting to recover the yields, starting to go down, went down, did a bit of a lip. Now, gold futures, well, gold was doing really well. It was breaking out. And I must say that gold is one of the most heavily manipulated asset classes on the planet. But it's definitely going to find support around this level. We can also see, just using your pattern recognition skills, I'll just get rid of these things. I don't like that magnet. Drawing a line from this peak to this peak and then just extending it. We can see negative air here, negative air there, and quite a lot, quite a sell-off, come back and actually is consolidating around that level. If we were to put, and don't forget, it's not about what you're looking at, it is about the skill. You could say that there's a fairly reasonable support level at 1763.70. You can do this for your own alts. That's why we always look at as many charts as we can. It just gets you really, really prepared. When looking at light crude oil, we can see the price continues to soar. Let's have a look at the major indexes. When we see the NASDAQ, let's just draw a line. This is this green line from there to there and just push it forward. What do we notice about price action? it's above resistance. Will it come back and retest? Yes, in all likelihood. Come back, retest, resume is very common stock market behavior. Let's have a look at the S&P 500. We'll just draw a line. Now, if we draw a line from there to there, just the same concept as we did, we'll get this line. Now, this line shows the price is clearly above. You can see that. So let's draw a secondary line from there to there. Now, what do we see? Yes, price has definitely repaired itself. It's going up. The Dow Jones is this blue line. The top is about there. The first bump in the road is about there. You can see the Dow Jones was repairing way before the NASDAQ and the S&P. Let's draw it to here, this peak, and just push it down. What do we see? A lot of power in the Dow Jones. It came out through resistance, turned it to support, did a retest, and it's resumed off. Very good work. Well done, Dow. Or is it Jones? Okay, let's have a look at the Russell 2000 from that peak to that peak and just push it forward. What do we notice? It's got through resistance, come up, starting to come back in for the retest. Do we expect a resumption? Yes, we would expect a resumption. We always just trade the chart in front of us, but being mindful of external events, such as the Evergrande situation, that is a real issue and it needs to be borne in mind, but just have a strategy of what you will do if that does happen. The financial markets are full of suffering. It's really important to understand the suffering either enslaves you or you release it to be free. That prison that suffering puts us in is a prison of our own making. We have the key to the door. We can let ourselves out at any time. It's really important to just embrace mistakes and look at them as just a part of the learning process because they are. I'd like to thank the very generous community members who have reached out and shown their appreciation by buying me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. Thanks so much, everyone. And a special thanks to Vicente and someone. Very nice comments that are written. It's just so lovely. I'm very grateful that this work is helping. It's very easy to be caught in zones one and two. The way to get out of zone one and two thinking is to understand and embrace that you are worthy and unique. You deserve kindness, love and meaning and every success in life. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video. Thank you to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. 
please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.